So bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil karim amma ba'd rabbi shahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli amin ya rabb This whole issue about the hijab in India and before that the issue of hijab in France and uh, what is some of the reasons now the Quran points to something regarding the hijab and niqab and that it fala yu'zain so that they will not be harassed and it has to do with identity you see the new postmodern world you see the modern world started and it's very interesting when you look at the flow from perceptions of something from the or the changes of something from the modern world as we go into the postmodern world so for example it started as feminism and then it became multi genders it started as paper money and now it's becoming digital money so the same comes here it started as hijab and hijab we have to save the muslim women from wearing hijab i'll show this references to you we have to save muslim women from their hijab from their oppression it's starting there to that this is the sign of terrorism hijab is a sign of terrorism and according to some historians uh, has been meaning in the past i'm going to come to that in a little bit but what i want to share with you is that what does hijab represent Hijab represents many things but one of the few things it represents is that it is the symbol of the male and female identities as long as women are wearing hijab there are two genders as long as women are wearing hijab there are only two genders male and female in order to succeed the ummah to believe or to accept culturally because it cannot be scientifically because you either have the chromosomes or don't that's just a fact but in order for the ummah to accept culturally in the different locations that there is more than two genders you have to take off the hijab because as long as anyone's wearing the hijab and then the others are not wearing the hijab the dichotomy the duality of male and female will exist in order to remove this duality in order to remove this idea of the male and the female laysa dhakaru kal untha the male is not like the female ba'dukum min ba'd you know fal ladina istajabu fal ladina amanu bi wa azzaruhu or where allah says faz uh, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى That I will not put to waste the good deeds of any of you, male or female. بَعْضُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْضُ You're from one another. Right? And the idea of marriage and the idea of hijab, these are ideas that the satanic forces are against because they want to mix things. In order to mix things, they have to beat this dichotomy this duality of male and female and in order to do that the hijab has to be a fundamental target has to be a fundamental target and thus the 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 forces of shaitan have been trying for a long time long time to uh create a problem with hijab and niqab and their perceptions and it is done like this now let me share with you how it is done so i wanted to first give you a bigger picture of what's happening before we talk about specifically france or specifically muslims in india or the rss before we talk about that i want to talk about some of the psychological slash philosophical slash eschatological aspects that give us the bigger picture so uh the political doctrine this is in the book the dying civilization okay the 
philosopher and psychologist, Fanon, Frantons, Fanon, he wrote, if you want, and he's quoting other people, if you want to destroy the structure of the Algerian society, its capacity for resistance, we must first of all conquer the women. You see, that whenever you want to conquer a people, you have to first get to the mind of their women. When you destroy the mind of the women, then you destroy that civilization. One of the things about hijab, you always cover something that's sacred. And one of the five things or seven things in the Sharia that are sacred, many, many rules are made for this one thing is aql. And so when a woman covers her head, she's covering her aql. She's saying, we will not, this, we will not let you penetrate will not let your ideas penetrate into us. That's what hijab represents. We will not let your false ideas penetrate into us. And so, keeping this in mind, and I will explain this in a little bit more, in, in a little bit detail, in just a little bit. So, If we want to destroy the structure of the Algerian society, its capacity for resistance, we must first of all conquer the woman who must go and find them behind the veil where they hide themselves in the houses where men keep them out of sight. Okay. And so why did uh, this, a dying civilization, have a woman as the first target, the author says? since veiled women served as a metaphor of oriental culture. So your hijab is not just a hijab, it's an identity. And if you want to get to destroy a civilization, you need to destroy its most powerful symbols, its most powerful uh, symbols that represent other aspects. So... Since the veiled woman served as a metaphor of oriental culture, the political strategy did not have exclusively a military character. According to Fanon, the French colonizers perceived Algerian women as embodying the true and authentic self of the Algerian culture, or you can say Muslim culture, since they represented the essence of the culture that was colonized, having access to them and their bodies symbolized the means for a successful penetration to the heart. Okay, so the first thing you have to understand that when you take off the hijab, then what the Muslim sister's ears are open to the bogus ideas of the satanic forces. But as long as she's wearing her hijab and covering her head, protecting her aql, covering her ears, from this falsehood, she represents and she becomes symbolic and she becomes a political metaphor of resistance. She becomes a political metaphor of a certain, uh, you can say, moral conduct, certain moral insight that there are male and female and there is marriage and there is modesty because modesty, you know, let me mention this here, is that the, the unfortunately Western uh, philosophy is now, and Western philosophy contradicts Western psychology, and I'll show you in one way. For example, Western philosophy has always considered what? Western philosophy has always looked at uh, rational and emotional. Well, what do you think about uh, emotions like guilt? When you do something, when you feel you've done something wrong, it's not just emotional, it's also rational. It's, it's sent, it, it, it is a sentiment. It is a sentiment that has emotion and rationality together. What do you think about gratitude, being thankful to someone? You think it's, ir it's irrational? No, it's rational. Is it an emotion? It's an emotion. So, you know, it's interesting when you study works like and Thomas, uh, Thomas Kuhn, for example, who wrote the book uh, of how hard... Uh, basically how 
the structures of the scientific revolution are beginning to fall apart. And in that, one of the things he emphasizes is how there's so many ideas in physics that contradict the ideas in chemistry, that contradict the ideas in biology. Even though they're three different fields, they're, they're doing scientific inquiry, but yet they contradict each other. I'm not going into that today. But what am I, I am saying is there's also contradiction within the social sciences. There is the idea of what is, how the brain thinks or the brain is in Western philosophy, which is mostly you're rational or irrational. But psychology has come to a point in Western psychology in this sense, in this instance, is correct that what do you think about regret? Or what do you think about gratitude or other emotions like that that are both rational and emotional? And they serve a moral cause. My point being that when the woman, she wears the hijab, it is not just a political resistance. Why is it a political resistance? Because when you wear hijab, there, it comes with a set of ideas a set of traditions, a set of values. It says you value marriage. It says you value modesty. It says you value the freedom of protecting your head and your ears from falsehood. It says you protect, you choose to tell men not to address you unless you allow them to address you. The hijab tells the women and the niqab tells the women especially, I can see you, but you cannot see me. That is the most powerful form of power. I can see you, you can't see me. And so, since they represented the essence of the culture that was colonized, having access to them in their bodies symbolized the means for a successful penetration to the heart. So, to my sisters in India, to my sisters in France, and to my sisters all over the world, who are one day going to face this problem. Because if it is hijab versus multi-genders, well, we have a long way to go. And many Muslim women are going to be harassed. They're going to be targeted. And they're gonna, it's gonna see, it's, they're gonna be targeted because they're gonna be seeing them, they're gonna be seen as a form of resistance. And the only way you can come against this form of resistance is by make, is, is first of all by making laws. So the first big experiment was with France. Now the big experiment is being done in India. And I will tell you one thing. If the Muslims of India fail, Listen to me, Muslims of India. If you fail to stand up to this nonsense, if you fail to stand up to this nonsense, you, then once that comes down, and once you give in, then it will be a disaster for the Muslims, women, who choose hijab all over the world. Muslims, women in India are not only fighting for Muslim women in India. This will be a landmark historical point from which other enemies of Islam will then be able to determine their course of action. And so it is very important that they go in full resistance just like the Algerian Muslim women did during the colonial days. Now, let's continue reading this. And this idea of penetration into the heart can only happen after you take off the hijab. Taking off the hijab means I have convinced you that we are right and you are wrong. Islam is wrong and we are right. Our way is right. Hinduism, Western civilization, or any other civilization is correct, your Islamic way, your morals, your ideas are incorrect.
As a consequence, the metaphorical link between woman and colony was established. In this context, the veiled woman, the other sex, and the colony, the other culture, which is dominating, were related. Colonies themselves were idealized as female. Okay, so when they, meaning the conqueror, looks at the Muslim civilization, it sees them it sees the civilization primarily in its female form. And in order to destroy it, they have to destroy that female form. This should remind you of a verse in the Quran, يَقْتُلُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ They will kill your men. They will kill enough of your men. وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ And they want to feel victory by what? by letting the women live so because if you killed everybody there's no trophy they're gone but if you kill the men and let the women live then you are now their trophy so the question is muslim women are you willing to be the trophy of the satanic forces are you willing to be the trophy of the satanic forces those forces that want to bring in a world in which there's more than one gender. Those forces that want to tell you that marriage is not a big deal. There's nothing sacred about the marriage life. Those forces that want to tell you that modesty is something of the old age. It's an ancient idea. That if you want to be freedom, if you want freedom, then you need to dance and become an eye candy and you need to take off your clothes. And this is their idea of freedom. But in fact, it is an idea that takes you into a type of hell into this world. And we all know this, especially those of us that live in the West, what happens. Later, they were credited with the power of invigorating the greater France. The main question related to Algerian case by the European colonizers was if there were, was any possibility of a complete assimilation. The French colonizers were aware at the strategic importance of family in Islamic society. French education was introduced in order to em 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 emancipate women, and in this way to obtain control over the Algerian family, meaning the Muslim family, by establishing British schools, uh, Western schools, especially for the elite across the Muslim world. So now these women would take off their hijab. Native women were given the historical mission of changing Algerian men. French authorities set up such and such discouraging veils. Okay, but over here, before discussing the colonizer's attitude towards the veiled woman, a brief overview of modern discourse on transparency is needed. Uh, I'm going to maybe not talk about this right now, but what I will show you is this. So this General Joseph Eugene, okay, was the most prominent masculine voice of the time. His numerous publications shaped the European vision of Algerian women for almost a century. He was the first colonial official to establish women as an object of systematic and scientific inquiry. Now, I want to emphasize here that what have Muslim become, Muslim women, what have they become? They've become the object of scientific and social inquiry in the academia. Why? Because that is what is needed to control them and to manipulate them. To, because when you change them, you change this, you know, the, 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 you, you change the whole culture. His aim as a writer was to tear off the veil which still hides mores, meaning cultures, customs, and ideas. Okay. Smith sees here a possible suggestion of rape. So there is a kind of like an intellectual and metaphorical and image based rape of the Muslim women by what? By taking off her hijab. 
by taking off the modesty she represents. Right? And only shaitan would take a lady that represents modesty and to take away that modesty, to take away that innocence, that purity. But this is what's happening in the world. And the Muslim women have to wake up. The Muslim women have to understand that they are the object of inquiry. They are the Jal's biggest attack. They are the satanic forces, number one priority, number one priority, number one priority is convincing the Muslim women that the other side, the grass is greener on the other side. When you convince the other Muslim women to convince them that something other than the way of modesty is better for them. And when you convince them that something other than family life is better for them, and they take off the hijab, then you will see the last vanguard of morality in its practice. In its practice, once that wall falls, then all types of fitan, all types of disasters will fall upon the Muslim world and the rest of the world. The Muslim woman's hijab is one of the last defense, last defenses left for a complete onslaught by the satanic forces. So it is very important that Muslim women in India and in France and wherever they are, they make a big deal out of their hijab. They see it not only as it's not just a religious obligation, but it is a political statement. A political statement. Muslim women who don't wear hijab should wear hijab, if not for anything, just to make the political statement that you agree with the ideas of family life. You agree with the ideas of modesty. You agree that there's only two genders for the most part. You agree that society should be based upon the idea of two genders. You agree that there is something called modesty, and modesty has value. If you agree with these things, then you should wear the hijab, at least the hijab. But again, Muslim sisters of India, you need to rise above sectarian divides. You need to rise above sectarian divides. You need to bring in the smartest Muslim sisters in India to intellectually dismiss, dissect, and to destroy these satanic ideas. Because if a brother talks about hijab it has one effect but when a group of Muslim women talk about hijab it has a different effect and so there is a serious need to study hijab and modesty and modesty especially because that's the basis of it is studying modesty as a scientific inquiry in order to respond. And so I encourage my Muslim sisters to understand this issue deeply and to understand this issue from all of its uh, consequences. The hijab has a military significance. It has a political significance, has a cultural significance, has a moral significance. It has a spiritual significance. And so it's very important that our Muslim sisters in India, they stand up, not only for themselves, but for the rest of the Ummah. The rest of the Ummah. The rest of the Ummah. I'm hoping, because the Muslim men of India have failed, and this is why it's come down to this, the Muslim men 
argued with each other in India over little petty things. Because the Muslim men never saw the bigger threat. And a true leader is the one who sees the bigger threat. The true leader is the one who is able to identify the threat and deal with it. The Muslim men of India failed. Now, the Muslim women of India have to stand up for themselves and for the Muslim women all over the world, including Muslim women in France. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the Muslim sisters of India courage and authentic insight into the Islamic paradigm to become an authentic voice of the Quranic and Sunnah paradigm and to give them the audacity and the courage and the insight and the effectiveness that it would make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extremely pleased and his messenger pleased with them. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. I'll end with this for today. There's a lot more I want to say about hijab, but inshallah soon.